Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have this um, beautiful situation of uh, you know having a nice conversation. We prepared some images, um, and who has been to uh, one of Cookie's restaurants? Just raise your hand. Okay. Oh, who, cool. Who, oh, well, very good. <laughs> so who doesn't know who Cookie is? Very good. So there's something to share. That's very good. Thank you uh, for uh, the light. So, so I don't actually have to say anything. <laughs> That's right. So, um, Cookie, uh, everybody thinks you're actually you're a Berliner. You are not born in Berlin, but no. you're born in in London. In London. Yeah. Uh, but you came to Berlin in an interesting time. Tell us when when was that? Well, um, I came to Berlin at the beginning of '92. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was. Any plan at that time? Because no, I was, I was 18. Uh, Berlin looked totally different than today. Okay. You can't actually imagine how, uh, how different it looked. Because you can see this uh, photo here on the slide. This is Auguststrasse, where I actually moved to, right in the center of the Berlin. Maybe one more. One more, one yeah. More uh, oh, the clicker. Hard to believe this is Mitte. Um, a lot of people uh, will not recognize look. this is Mitte here. Um, so what happened here in that place? Well. It was just three years after the fall of the wall, mm -hmm. and um, Berlin hadn't been renovated, and actually the whole houses and the properties weren't clear who they were owned. And that's why I came to Berlin, and uh, so there was a lot of free spaces where we can imagine to do anything you can think of. So you actually had no plan. I mean, it was interesting that you shared that you, know, you didn't go to university or whatever, you just had this idea to start off with a bar, right? You just said, I just, how can, who had, the, did you have that idea to just okay, start When I was 18, I needed a job, so yeah. uh, okay. I started as a dishwasher on the Weinienburger Straße. And uh, a few years later, a neighbor of mine in the house where we used to, li where we lived, had the idea of opening of a bar in the cellar. Okay. And there's a, there's a little and picture of that first bar, right? I think. Yeah. Is it? We yeah, can see it. There exactly. it is. So, there it is. Yeah. Here so this is me when I was 21 years old. This is my first bar. It's the only Look at the curly I hair. Have. Great. <laughs> curly yeah, hair. I had a little bit more hair. <laughs> um, uh, working by the thing, uh, the bar. It's um, it was uh, the special thing about it was that it was open on Tuesdays and Thursdays because on the weekend I'd work somewhere else to earn the money actually to earn right. to earn my money okay. that I could live off. And it all started there in a very tiny space in mm -hmm. the cellar, hidden back. And it started to become famous by word of mouth to go there on a Tuesday and Thursday. And you actually always knew that you had to leave these spaces because you were in these places I was, I was only always, for a short time, right? Yeah, I was always hoping to stay longer. Uh -huh. But because the ownership wasn't clear at the time, right. and you actually would never know in the evening it would be your last night because you weren't sure if you were going to be kicked out the next day. Uh, okay, so you live with tension, you know, Daniel, <laughs> when you saw in the moment, you know, he, he, so you, you, you trained that muscle. Yeah. Okay. And we moved then in total seven times over 20 years. Seven times with yeah. the bar, and it got bigger and bigger? Yep, the first one was tiny, and every time it grew up, and it got more famous, the crowd of Berlin started knowing about it. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, this is so my was, second bar. This is the second bar. Like, how many people are in that room? How many people are on there? Yeah, maybe it was a Oh, I don't know how many people are on there, but it's like 30 people. And actually, if I look at the picture, I can see, I know everyone actually what they drank at the time. Oh, even that, OK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were, it was only full of regular guests. They would come every Tuesdays and Thursday, drink the same drink normally. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, that was a really short, uh, small family feeling. OK, and so after moving and moving and moving, so slightly bigger. Slightly bigger, and uh, let's have a look. I think there's uh, a, the next press space. Is, this was a change, right? Because this is a, a space on yeah. Charlottenstraße. I think. The, um, how big was that? It was a thousand square meters. We had like a huge. We had the whole first floor, second floor was in a former bank. Uh, but I think the biggest change was that this is more or less my first legal club, because I started. <laughs> This is number five, to, for everyone who's oh. been there, this is number five. Uh, the first clubs, of course, I started illegally because I didn't have a contract, I couldn't get a license, Did and it wasn't possible at the time. It? Did you actually ever think about like, applying at the authorities in Mitte? Well, as a, uh, yeah, no? of course, of you, course. You did, yeah, okay. but, but of course you couldn't get anything because you, 
you had to build so much and invest so much. If you didn't know how long you're going to be there, it wasn't possible at the time to invest. That didn't make sense. No. If you only stay 18 months, yeah. it doesn't or make six sense. Months. Even six months. And okay. I'm actually really lucky because this place went off from right from the beginning. Right on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1,200 guests a night and 80% regular guests. And if wow. it wouldn't have gone off like that at the beginning, I would have been bankrupt with 28 because it cost so much to build this into a legal but club. But that was the first legal club. It, correct. So, but you were bought and you said, if there's something legal, I have <laughs> to do something illegal. So, the <laughs> illegal thing is, I think, the next picture, it was yeah. the, the first restaurant, right? Exactly. It's like, uh, so, yeah. after, after about a year, and I knew I could stay in the venue longer, I, saw, I started getting bored, and I thought, okay, let's open up a restaurant, and because I'm really fast, we open up this restaurant in three weeks' time, but I didn't really bother getting a license. Again. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So you see, you can go pretty far in Berlin, you know. You know it's, it's but, but actually, with this one, I got in big trouble. Okay. It's the this first one? venue okay. where I got really in big trouble. Okay. It's like the landlords found out there were two magazines, uh, magazines printing about illegal restaurants in Berlin, and of course, I was on it above oh cookies. Oh my goodness. Press. And I nearly got kicked you. out. And then uh, I had a lot of trouble, and so after that, I decided a year later, because I got bored again, that I would open up uh, a, a legal restaurant. Okay. And this is then my first legal restaurant, legal restaurant in the same venue. In the same venue. So the idea actually from club to restaurant, you always had that idea. You, you were running those in parallel, right? Yeah. So, so this was like the, the main idea was like just before going out, uh, no, going, before going into a club, you go into the restaurant, have a great dinner, get a great time, and then you might move on to the club and end up leaving the club at 6 o'clock in the morning. I love this. I was in the illegal one, by the way. Um, it, was, it was beautiful. It was, you know, interesting atmosphere. It was smelling because they didn't have this, you know, air conditioning thing. And it was just amazing. We loved it. We loved it at that time. Now let's switch a little bit because one of the stories and why we're sitting here is that the food part actually plays a, a more important role now in your life. Um, when did you decide to only go um, with the restaurant and continue the food part and not the club part? When was that? Well, in 2007, I opened up Cookies number uh, 7. And um, because I got kicked out of the other location, it got renovated. Right. And um, then I decided again to open up another restaurant on top of the club mm -hmm. at 2007. Um, I've been always doing venues, spaces, where I really love, what, love them and I create them more or less for myself and hope that all the mm -hmm. friends and people come there because they have a great time and they take, keep talking about it and having a great time there, so they come again. Um, so the last, uh, so Cookies, uh, Cookies Cream, the restaurant above the Cookies club. number seven, yes. Um, was my focus in having a great place, a great venue where people would have fun before going out. Uh, but it but was a different restaurant for the first time? It, it was, was a different restaurant, different concept, because I've been a vegetarian since my eighth birth year. Uh, I decided to give this a different try and really focus on things that I was important for me, right. and opened up a vegetarian restaurant. So it's interesting, so you but were it, vegetarian? It was, the focus was more having a great time, having fun, right. and it happened to be vegetarian, okay. and that wasn't that important for me because I've always been a ve it was very important for me that's vegetarian, yeah. but I couldn't imagine that that would be an issue for someone else. Okay, so I remember, you know, vegetarians like, you know, 20, 20 30 years ago was not so fun uh, uh, very often, you know, people were not seen as the fun people, you know, oh yeah, I go for, you know, the, the vegetarian <laughs> part, uh, and also restaurants at, like 20 years ago were not fun. So, so actually you, what you tried, you, you tried to take that crowd as well, very cool crowd, hip crowd, and then introduce them to um, a vegetarian restaurant. How did it go? <laughs> well, did it all, work, all, right yeah, well, all my friends and all my regular guests have been following me for over 12 years, mm -hmm. they came, they came for once, they came one time, and they were really upset that it was vegetarian and decided not to come again. So, um, oh, okay. I was always very lucky at the times before I'd open up a club or open up other things and it would be immediately full packed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this was like the first venue that I had where I had like real trouble. Like on a Wednesday night, we had two guests. In the uh, whole restaurant? In the whole restaurant, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, it's but I think the so it didn't actually work for, for quite some time? It took, took a long time, but the lucky thing was that I had Stefan Henschel, my chef cook. Let's have a look. 
Oh, that's the restaurant. That's the restaurant. restaurant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we have Stefan here. That's yeah. Stefan. Okay. I met him in my club when he was around 25 years old, and he okay. was determined to have the restaurant with me mm -hmm. or to run the restaurant as a head chef. And um, he invented a new kind of kitchen. At the time, it was focusing on making the vegetable a star. Like you'd have the vegetable as a main dish, cooking. You, at those days, you were used to overcooked vegetables, having them with a pasta or a salad. Mm -hmm. And his goal was just to say, we make a vegetable kitchen where the vegetable tastes amazingly. And that's what he managed to do. Mm -hmm. And that, after two, three years, got recognized. So it took by three years to actually you know, build reputation that people would come. So it, I think it Berlin, changed a a money, Berlin right? changed also a little bit. The people okay. were more interested in trying okay. special food, mm -hmm. trying things out, instead, except of always having the dishes that they knew. Mm -hmm. And it took another two years, so we got a little bit of recognition wow. from the restaurant critics. Yes, right. so it was five years in totally a difficult time. But still, you know, what I, what I found amazing is the, the passion for hospitality that you had in the beginning on, being such a young man, not pursuing university, you just did it. So you took, uh, like we can say today, we learned how to dance with life. I think you took a great <laughs> dance with yeah, life. Yeah, I, I, I saw and, the dance with life. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you followed your intuition and, and you actually took your passion into food, actually without being a miss, missionary. You're not a missionary. You were never trying to convince people to also yeah. change to, to vegetarian no, I, food. I, right? I, I hate it uh, to, when people are missionaries, yeah. but I think when I started becoming a vegetarian, I was eight years old, and the main reason was you were a vegetarian at the time because you didn't want to harm animals. Mm -hmm. I think now the biggest change is now that the people know how unhealthy meat is, that the most people nowadays are more vegetarian because of health reasons yes. or environment reasons. And that's also changed the whole atmosphere of being a vegetarian. Okay. So, um, so taking that, you know, that passion you know, put it into everything that, you know, you and Stefan were, were working on, um, and that actually, you know, so you succeeded. So uh, let's have that, um, uh, that, that slide. Um, yeah, uh, well, I think it was after, like, we, so we celebrated last year our 10th anniversary. We were okay. 10 years old. We did a big tour around Europe, uh, having a pop-up restaurant in one, for one night in London, Ibiza, and Zurich. And then in that week, we celebrated, and we actually didn't want to drink anything anymore because we drank enough alcohol. And then Stefan got this amazing phone call, and he called me immediately, and we actually achieved a Michelin star in a Cookies Cream wow. after 10 years running. Bravo. <laughs> so, and this is the first time yeah. ever in Germany that a vegetarian restaurant yeah. receives that. We are, we are the first restaurant in Ger uh, first vegetarian restaurant that achieved the Michelin star as a vegetarian restaurant. Fantastic! So that's bravo. And I, I, the best thing is we didn't ever expect to get a Michelin star because the people who know Cookies Cream, it's hidden. It's you go through alley, pa alley past rubbish bins. We always do that what we want to. We want to be a hospitality, but we do it our way, like in cool, easygoing way. And so we'd never thought that we would get a Michelin star. So that was for us the biggest surprise. Fantastic. Our time is up. I can see already the, the rest. Yeah, I, think I, see. I want to thank um, you for coming and sharing that story. And I think I would like to encourage more people uh, to take that passion um, and also take the risk even losing money for the first couple of yeah. years. Um, and, and really, it paid off in the end. And I hope that you have many, many more ideas like that and you yeah. take that passion with you. Thanks so much, Thank Cookie. you very much. Thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs>